Good evening everybody and welcome to webinar 8 in the Get Up to Speed program. My name is Zoe White, I'm the Social Media Marketing Specialist for the Training Collective and tonight we're focusing on social media for the individual. Now I know that the majority of you are business owners and you're very keen to get into social media for your business but tonight really and this week's learnings are based on the foundations of understanding social media for two reasons. One, it's so that when you come to create content in your own social media marketing, you're able to separate your business and your personal use of social media. But of course, it's also fundamental to success in your marketing that you understand how people are using the medium and using social media marketing generally. A little bit of background on me first for those of you that have not worked with me before. As I said, I'm the social media trainer and specialist for the Training Collective. I also own and op operate my own social media training company called Social Media Shortcut. I've been using social media myself since 2007. Um, for most people, they're a little surprised that I'm actually a marine biologist by training. And the reason that I went into social media marketing and internet marketing generally was really out of desperation. I had branched into my own business in environmental consulting. I had a small niche business that I just needed to get to the right people, to connect with the right people and to articulate what it was that I did and how I could assist them. So I looked at the internet as a way of reaching people that I hadn't done previously. Now that business started in 2003 and by 2007 I'd branched into video marketing um, and the lady who was teaching me video marketing said to me, Zoe, Twitter, Twitter is going to be huge. Just by a show of hands, pop your hands up for me. Who's using Twitter? When using Twitter? Twitter's like, um, think of it as like text messaging, but on the internet. No hands, one hand. Stephanie saying, yeah, um, I'm using Twitter, but I've got no idea what I'm doing. That's okay. You will have by the end of, of these two weeks learnings. So I jumped on Twitter and thought, you know, how could this really work? for a business. It's all about what's happening right now. There are a lot of celebrities getting themselves in a lot of trouble on the network. Um, and what happened was I tweeted or posted a video about the power of focus in business. A gentleman in New York who was somewhat of an idol of mine in internet marketing picked up that tweet and retweeted it or reposted it to his network. He had about 100,000 followers on Twitter and so I was launched on Twitter. Suddenly people were asking where's that content coming from, who's Zoe, etc. And they started following me. I thanked that gentleman publicly and he came back to me and said on Twitter, I'm always happy to share good content. Do you have any more? And I think that was the day the light bulb went off for me in social media. And the reason I take so long to tell you that story is I want you to start thinking now. Uh, Think less about what you want to say on social media and more about what you want people to read. So tonight, from a personal perspective, you really need to start thinking about how visual do I want to be? Who am I going to make friends or connect with? And how much of my personal life do I want on the networks? Because you can be as open or as closed as you like. For some of the business marketing tools, you will require a personal network to actually use the business pages or structure, but it doesn't mean you have to use that personal profile and it certainly doesn't need, mean that you need to have it open or be promoting your business on it. And in fact, in most cases, for most sites, it's against the site's um, terms and conditions to be promoting a business on your personal profile. But think, though, how your use of social media will make you the business professional look, but also you your business product or service when it comes to next week. Um, I've now grown my business completely online via the internet. Uh, I grew from a, um, initially a small office in North Queensland and then on the Sunshine Coast. I'm privileged to say I work with clients in seven countries around the globe. I get to spend several months each year traveling back to Europe and America and I'm about to do the same for another four weeks at the end of this year. So I get to work with the best of the best in social media and I also get to bury myself in social media. I realize for all of you, you don't. So tonight, make the most of the time we have together tonight and next week. Ask lots of questions because I'm all about you getting maximum results for minimum time invested in social media. 
But gone are the days when you can just say, I don't get social media, I haven't got the time for it. Because whether you like it or not, your market, um, your competitors are using the medium as well. So we really need to be thinking about how does our use of social media reflect on us, the business professional, and next week on our, on our actual businesses, products and services. So tonight we're going to look at the major social networks. We're going to look at the individual profile on the major social networks and understanding how you can make friends, connections, followers, etc. Who to connect with, who not to connect with. Tonight, obviously, as you know, having had a few weeks in the program now, tonight is not about teaching you personal use of social media. That all comes in the online portal and the lesson. It's really about picking on the major points from that learning um, and allowing you to ask questions of me as well as we go. Um, I encourage you at all stage to put your questions into the question panel. I'm going to ask you to interact at times um, and I'm very happy to go and do live demonstrations or examples if that will assist you in the time we have together. While you will understand the benefits, the amount that you are using social media personally is completely up to you. I don't want you to think because you want to use social media marketing for a business that suddenly you have to be very active on the sites yourself. You don't. You do need to have a thorough understanding of them though and particularly in regards to um, securing your privacy and settings around the sites. We'll also be looking at some tools that can help you to measure the impact. Now what I will say with social media generally, it is much easier to set up accounts, to change security settings, um, to really understand the networks on a computer. So on a desktop or on a laptop computer. Apps on mobile devices make accessing social media very easy and in some cases even posting to the sites but separating your personal and your business use on social media unless you have third party tools is much more difficult on the mobile devices. So if you're watching tonight on an iPad or a phone that's great but when we come to look at securing your um, privacy settings for instance I do recommend if you can access a desktop or a laptop. Um, there are greater features available to you in most cases and they're a whole lot easier to access. The mobiles are designed, um, the mobile apps are designed to make using the sites very, very quick and easy, but they're not always as friendly in terms of locking down privacy and changing settings, etc. Okay, so let's get started. What is social media? Well, in a nutshell, as you can see on the screen, the Wikipedia description of social media is one that turns internet and web-based technologies to transform broadcast media or monologues into social media dialogues. And when you think about it from a business perspective, we've really spent a lot of time in pushing marketing material out into the marketplace. And then the trend became to pull people into our marketing funnel, ask them for feedback, do lots of surveys, ingrain them in it. Now what's happening with the internet generally and social media technologies is this a, there's this democratisation of knowledge whereby whether we're producing the information on social media or not, our market, our clients, our potential clients are talking about us, our products or services, whether we like it or not, good, bad or otherwise. And in fact, when we create content from a personal perspective tonight or from a business perspective next week, um, we do give up a little bit of our privacy and we do give up to some extent some level of control when we you know, build platforms and if you're going to engage in a social media conversation then you do have to understand that sometimes there's going to be people that disagree with you or that may take the platform that you've constructed and want to use it for their own purposes. It's no different to walking into a party or a networking event where one person wants to hog the microphone. We've all had that uncle or auntie or cousin at a wedding who decides that they want to do all of the singing after far too much to drink. And social media can be a little like that. What is important though is to remember is if you build the platform, you get to choose the security and privacy settings around it. You actually get to choose on your personal profile, your company page, if you're going to block people, if you're going to remove comments. You can't stop the people making the comment but if you have actually taken control of your part of the social network, then you have some level of control um, over that area, whether it be your personal profile or your business account. At its 
true heart and essence, social media is just a communication tool. And, you know, I can remember when I went to university and I learned to code in three different languages. In fact, we'd only got our first computer at high school some two years before that. Um, I was born in 1970. I'm happy to say that. I'm not 21. Um, but, you know, I coded in three languages that we never used because technology has moved so rapidly. So for all in your call tonight, I want you to think, remember, think less about what you want to say and more about what you want, to pe want people to read. And if personally you really don't want people reading a lot about your personal life, then don't put it on social media. You can still be a very effective social media marketer for your business um, without revealing too much of yourself on social media. Conversely, if you're the sort of person who is social and you do like to share on social media, um, then what I would say to you is be mindful of how that reflects upon any business that you represent. So when you look at the statistics in Australia, and I'd like you to pop into the question box now, what social media you are using personally. So what do you actually have personal accounts on and what level of experience do you have on those? Would you consider yourself a novice? Are you comfortable with it? Are you advanced? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What is it? Give me an idea. Have we got Facebook users, Instagram users, LinkedIn users? Got a couple here saying still just looking at it. Okay, Facebook. Okay, Facebook and you're comfortable with it, great. Facebook only to keep tabs on the kids. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I actually have five, I say I've survived five teenagers um, with a Brady Bunch, so two of, uh, three of them are stepchildren. Um, I actually had my fifth grandchild yesterday, so that's exciting. I can tell you the world they're growing up in is vastly different to the one um, that I, you know, in terms of high school and, and university that I did even a few years ago. Okay, Marie's on Pinterest. I love Pinterest. Pinterest is a, a visual sharing network. Chelsea, Facebook, very basic. LinkedIn, even more basic. So LinkedIn is a business, business to business professional network. And I think as business professionals, it is important that you do optimize your LinkedIn profile, even if you're only checking it from your email accounts. But again, think about how it makes you look as a business professional. Um, Love to learn how to set up a YouTube channel. Karen, that's an interesting one if you're doing it for yourself, you know, just for personally, wedding party, anything, or if you're doing it for your business one. Certainly next week we'll talk a lot about YouTube and the future of video and live video that's coming in as well. Um, and Karen, I hear you about Facebook sporadically <laughs> when I get time. I think that's one of the, the main things is when we're looking at these numbers, um, when we're looking at these numbers here, Fiona's saying Facebook, LinkedIn, comfortable, have Instagram and Twitter, Pinterest accounts, but never use them. And, and I think a lot of us are like that, Fiona. We sort of, particularly for business, we set things up because you go to a training or somebody says you need to have it or comes with your website build and then you're sort of sitting, sitting there thinking, why do I have this? I just don't get it. And when you look at these statistics and numbers, it's very easy to see that um, in Australia, Facebook is the big winner in terms of the most people using the network. But I think we'll do this for business again next week. But personally too, I would say to you, look at what you're trying to achieve for your business through social media and get comfortable at least with the social media sites that your ideal target market are using because if you don't understand Pinterest but your market's using it and you start marketing on Pinterest, you say, I just want to use it for my business. I'm not interested personally, for example. What you'll find is you'll post things that just really don't suit the style of the site or you may find that you're posting and you're just not getting any likes or repins in that case, you know. So it's important to understand how I'm going to do inverted commas in the air here, how regular users are using the social media platforms. I personally do not really enjoy Facebook. Um, I related to Karen there, when I get time, I find it quite overwhelming with five teenagers, five grandchildren um, and, and business colleagues that use Facebook a lot. I find the minute I get on Facebook, people are asking me questions. That said, I couldn't 
I, I've gained a lot in my business and my business marketing through Facebook. My market's definitely there. I've formed some wonderful allegiances and alliances through business groups on Facebook. And of course, you're all involved in a group too that helps us support our trainees and our learners. So I think it's really important that you focus on either the social network personally that you enjoy, but secondary, the other social networks that you're going to focus on as a business. So next week when we look at the business one and you identify, okay, I'm going to use platform A and B, so it might be Facebook and YouTube, for instance, then you need to come and personally get comfortable with those sites. I also recommend to people um, that when you're learning social media, that you actually learn it as on your personal accounts first, and in a lot of cases, um, accounts like, or platforms rather like Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram, you can be anonymous. You can actually use pseudonyms. So you can kind of play with those sites and find out what people like. Now, I'm not suggesting you do anything underhanded or say anything you don't mean, but I'm saying just get comfortable with it first. Don't just jump straight in with your brand next week. Um, if you haven't actually spent some time on the networks, got to know the language, the culture, um, and understand, because they all seem to have a language of their own. I think you'd agree. Yep. Okay, so the big four, if you're looking at this, like, where do I start? I would definitely get comfortable with Facebook. Okay. The reason for that, there's over 14, there's only 15 million Australians now on the platform. Nine million of them are logging in every single day. So we can see the numbers there and the attractiveness for business. But of course, also, um, you can make some great connections on Facebook. Although I said to you, I find it takes up a fair bit of time. I've put some tools around it and some guidelines around it. Um, and it's an incredible resource. Like I said, we had a, a grandchild born yesterday. The first photos are up on Facebook. They're in a private family group. We got to share them with my 77-year-old mother-in-law who was, you know, 100 kilometres away from the baby. And um, we get to travel the world and know the kids are okay and vice versa. You know, we're doing all sorts of calls. Facebook also is making massive gains in terms of the technology they're pumping out. Um, there's been rumours of Facebook actually creating a, a phone, a mobile phone. I don't think they will, but what they will do is create it into a VoIP service, so a voice over internet protocol. So um, it's already happening with Messenger where you can video message, you'll be voice message, etc. So as long as you've both got Facebook accounts and internet connectivity, you'll be able to chat and to video conference, etc. for free. Um, that's going to open up a lot of the world for a lot of people. Now, I know there's other services like Skype, et cetera, that some of you may be using, but, you know, Microsoft got involved there. There were some additional charges and things that came on. The structures changed slightly. Google Hangouts um, are awesome on Google+, Plus, but they do tend to take up a lot of bandwidth, so you need to have really good internet, et cetera. Okay, the second one, Twitter. Twitter is all about what's happening right now. Think of it as text messaging on the internet. It's limited to 140 characters, and it's the main primarily of middle-aged men and women such as myself um, that don't have a lot of time. Busy professionals, pretty much. The other end of the spectrum with Twitter are teenage girls because they were, they were turned on to it um, fairly well by a little band called One Direction. And I think One Direction, anybody know One Direction? Hands up, anyone with, with girls? Um, eight and up, will have heard of One Direction. Um, One Direction and even Justin Bieber, who came from YouTube, really used Twitter and continue to, to reach out to their fans and to engage them. And they're a good case study for you to think about. When they came to Twitter, rather than just putting their advertising and their broadcast medium on the site, they used the tool in a way that was different from all of their other marketing and messages. And they really reached out to fans quite in a quite a personal way, or at least they built the persona that they were doing that. Okay? So if you think of Facebook as your newspaper, you kind of go to it once a day on average. You're consuming it page by page, in other words, 10 or 15 minutes at a time sometimes. But there's not a lot of feedback. You tend to go and post things and have a little conversation around that based like letter to the editor. Twitter, however, is your radio. It's your talkback radio. It's chatting. It's tweets. It's garbled. It's 
bits and bobs and people come in and out and it moves very, very quickly. With that in mind then, YouTube is your television station. It's your TV, including the ads, as much as we all hate them. Pop your hand up for me if you've ever Googled, pop them down, if you've ever Googled how to video, on a video on how to do something. Bang, 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 bang. I think I've got all but one. <laughs> um, you know, Fiona, I think your hand came on and off there as well. But we all have. And for that reason, YouTube has actually become the second largest search engine on the internet. So it makes sense that you understand it personally. It's also been bought by Google. So the biggest search engine in the world bought the second biggest search engine in the world, primarily because I think they thought it was a threat. What Google then did was went and put a whole social layer over the top of their products called Google+. Plus. So if you've ever signed in to Google or Google services, it may have been um, to watch videos, not just to, um, to pop any up yourself, or Google Maps or Google Locations or Gmail, etc. then you have a Google account. So you actually have the ability to set up a YouTube channel on that Google account with the click of one button. But be very, very careful around YouTube and Google. Next week we're going to set up for business. I would caution you to sign out of everything and start right from the beginning with your Google, any um, Gmail address that you use um, for Google Analytics. It doesn't have to be a Gmail address, but it does make things a little bit easier. So just be careful. It's very easy to duplicate YouTube. So we've got a newspaper, our radio, and our TV and YouTube. LinkedIn then sits in as our business networking event. Now, as business professionals, as I said before, I think it's really important that you, A, have um, a LinkedIn profile, and B, you optimise it so it makes you look good, pure and simple. The amount of people you connect with on the site is completely up to you. It's just like a business networking event. Do you go there to just wear your badge and say, I'm here, I'm supporting the community, I'm part of it? Or do you go in and actively try and meet people? Are you looking for introductions? Are you trying to expand your network? Are you taking a stall at the side of the room to spread your business cards? What is it for you? And a quick tip, I know in this week's lesson we had a whole guide on how to optimise your LinkedIn profile. What I will say to you is make sure that you have three sections to your LinkedIn profile. Your experience is the area that simply your resume. I worked in this job from this time to this time. Here are the things that I did. Add at the top of that, it's a separate section that you need to add in called a summary. And a summary really is a summary of your experience. So based on all of these jobs and everything I've done previously, here's kind of the about me statement. And again, think less about what you want to say and more about what you want people to read. So if you think, do I need to tell people this? The, the simple question is, do you want them to know? An example of this is um, I had 10 years with the government in my marine biology work with um, environmental agencies. And I didn't put the government work on my LinkedIn profile initially. Because I was fearful of two things. One, my degree was in biological science and not in marketing, and I thought people may find that strange. Um, I have now gone on, I'm a certified practicing marketer. I have qualifications, but my degree is actually in marine biology. The second thing was I really wasn't looking to go back into a government role. So I thought, well, if I'm not looking for government job, why do I put in government experience? And this was a good lesson for you to take from me. We were working with what was then Didi, and it's now the Department of Small Business, generally, running webinar series for business owners like yourself on um, growing their business through digital marketing. And when we were talking at one of the planning sessions and they said there were certain um, restrictions around how we presented webinars, whether we could admit liability, things like that, etc., cetera, um, there, was, there was a strict system that we had to work to. And I went, it's, it's all right, I completely understand because I used to work in the government. And our contact at the time said to me, why is that not in your LinkedIn profile? That is such a big plus if you're looking at working with government agencies in a role. And it really stopped me in my tracks. And I thought, you know what, she's right. I was more concerned about me 
not wanting to go back into a government role, I hadn't really thought about my ideal target market. Now, I know we're talking about personal social media tonight, but really think about that. As an individual, LinkedIn is a business site. It's business to business. It's a professional business site. So if I'm on there, I should be on there as the business professional. And next week we'll get to company pages, but your personal profile should be the best representation of you, the business professional, okay? So your experience relevant to what you want people to know about you in a business sense. A summary, which is a summary of that experience, and then right at the very top under your name, a professional headline. Now this is all outlined in the lesson, but I just wanted to really reinforce those key things. Experience, summary, um, and then your professional headline, okay? along with all the other things we had in the lesson. Now, that professional headline is a summary of the summary. So it's one sentence that says who you are as a business professional. If you don't write it, it will simply be your current role at your current company. But you can make it so much more than that. Okay. One question here, what if you have multiple roles or if you're in a job but building a business? Yeah, great question. Great question. And again, I do encourage your questions as we go through. Um, LinkedIn does allow you to have more than one job in experience. You can put, I started at this time and I currently work here, so it's to present. Um, if you, you look at my LinkedIn profile, linkedin.com forward slash Zoe Wyatt, um, you'll see that I, I've got the trainer at the Training Collective, Social Media Specialist at the Creative Collective um, and the Social Media Shortcut. They're all in, um, the order they come in is based on the ones that I started uh, the earliest. So that makes that professional headline even more important because you don't just want it being one of those businesses and roles. Um, if your current boss is not aware of your entrepreneurial business sidelines, think about whether, whether or not you include that and how you include it. Again, think less about what you want to say and more about what you want them to read. So really think about what are they reading? How will that be perceived? How will it make me look? Is that okay right now? Et cetera. Okay, great question. Okay, so along with the big four, there's more popping up all the time. Okay, we've got Pinterest and Google Plus and Instagram. The big players really are these three. Um, if you are trying to drive traffic through a shop front, just by a show of hands, who has um, a restaurant or a hairdresser professional, you're actually trying to get foot traffic through a door for your business. Just pop your hands up for me. Only a few of you, which is generally what I see. So if you are, and particularly if you have one location or, um, or a small number of locations, Google Plus is important because Google Plus is now part of um, a suite of products called Google My Business. And it was in the, the lesson as well, but Google My Business has really expanded. Google is giving lots of resources and help to businesses to use their products and services. And because 97% of all searches done in, in Australia are done on Google, no Google or YouTube or Google property, then we really do need to make sure your business is located right on the map, okay? And if you're trying to drive traffic through a shop front, Google Plus, may be important to your Google My Business. What I will say though, is there are very few people actively using Google Plus. Um, those doing it well are educators and trainers because there are some cool tools there like live hangouts, video conferencing, direct connection to YouTube, etc. that can really help. I know they help me in my business. Um, but I'm finding that's a domain really of, of technical, techie people, predominantly younger males as well. Pinterest is the furthest extreme from that. Who's using Pinterest? I noticed uh, we had one before. Before, Pop your hand up if you're using Pinterest. You like Pinterest. Personally, this is love it, Maria, it's you. Um, Tanya as well. Yeah, I, Pinterest is the only social media I have to set an alarm clock to get off. It is just beautiful. So the difference here between Pinterest and Instagram they're both visual networks. They're both based on visuals or pictures and videos, okay? But Instagram, I want you to think of as kind of a camera. We take 
the image, we make it look beautiful, and we share it with our followers on Instagram. Now, Facebook actually bought Instagram. All they've done with it is made it really easy to share your content across to Facebook. They really haven't changed it much. Pinterest is more like your photo albums because there you have boards, they're virtual pin boards, and they're on the internet where you pin images to them. So you basically pin photos and videos on boards. And you can theme those boards. So you may have a board that's all about interior design. I have one on, um, anyone that knows me knows I love shoes. So I have shoelicious shoes for Zoe, and I have um, places I want to travel. And I have things I just love, and they're just beautiful, warm things. But then I also have a whole host of boards on social media for business, Facebook for business, Instagram for business, YouTube for business, etc. So if you're looking for great resources, then Pinterest.com forward slash Zoe Wyatt, so Z-O-E. W-Y-A-T-T is a great business resource. Now that's my personal Pinterest account, but I have set it up on a business structure so I can share information with you on those accounts um, without, and it has a slightly different terms and conditions when you're using it in a way, because I do promote uh, both the training collectives and my own trainings on one of those boards as well. So if you think of it that way, Google is all about maps, locations, techie tools and education. Instagram is taking photos and videos and making them beautiful and sharing them with people that love images as well, integrated beautifully into Facebook. Pinterest is where we hold all of those images. And if you're in a visual market or if you simply love beautiful images yourself, then you may well love Pinterest. What I say with Pinterest is very few words, words because the images talk for themselves. Okay, so let's put on, let's push through. Mobile is where it's really headed. So in all of this yourself, once you sign up for a network, get your security settings right, get comfortable with it, I encourage you to use the mobile apps. Install them and use them. Get comfortable from a personal perspective before you start trying to use them for business. And I'm going to say it again, next week we focus on business, you're going to find that some of these apps or the apps for some of the social sites are very difficult to use from a business perspective. You know, for instance, Facebook is designed for people to get in and network with their family and friends, share topics and themes around what they love and with those they love. Now, you can like business pages um, and you can certainly get sponsor, um, great offers from products and brands, but at its heart, it's a social network. So the app for Facebook is really good about keeping your personal use of Facebook. It's really lousy, to be honest, um, at trying to do business marketing. Now, they've helped us out because they've given us a separate app we'll talk about next week, and I'm also going to introduce some third-party or apps that other companies make that make social media management for business much easier. Um, I will say LinkedIn has an awesome app. It's a really great app and it makes it very easy to connect with people. Twitter's pretty good, um, as is Instagram. But what I'll say with both of those accounts, because the structure of the account is just you log in as either yourself or the business, if you want to change between business and personal, it gets a bit clunky because you're changing into separate accounts. Talking about accounts and changing between business, personal, professional, etc., what I recommend is when you look at usernames, so what you're signing up on the accounts for, what you're using, if it's your personal account, use a personal name. If you don't want to be known by your name, use a nickname. For a business account, it should be your business name. There is nothing worse than seeing a personal profile on Facebook or Instagram that is in a business name. It's actually in breach of those sites' terms and conditions. Every profile, so membership, should be set up in an individual's name. That individual then becomes the administrator of a business page. And when you think of it this way, it's like um, setting up a flyer for your business on Facebook or Instagram. Now, if you're still researching your name, you're doing some brand investigations, maybe you didn't name your accounts quite the right way, there's a great site here called knowem.com, K-N-O-W-E-M.com. Excuse me, but you can research your business names. 
It will also tell you if um, certain websites are available, etc., those sorts of things as well. So I encourage you to investigate all of those, but get really comfortable with the ones that you're setting up. For, as I said, for Facebook and LinkedIn, you need a personal profile in order to administer a company page. On Twitter and on Instagram and on Pinterest, you simply log in and set up a business account. The only difference on Instagram and Twitter is the name that you give it. On Pinterest, you actually do need to have sign up for a business account, but it's totally separate from your personal one if you have one as well. On any of the Google properties, so the YouTube, the Google Plus, um, it's all based on a Google account, okay? So if you have logged in with a Google account, there will be a YouTube channel and a Google Plus profile set up in the same name. Once you set up a personal profile at Google Plus, you then can set up and administer a company page. So just be a little bit careful because what I see sometimes when people have set up a personal Google account and rather than setting up a business page and then a YouTube channel in the business name, they'll accidentally set it up in their own name. While you can change it, it's very, it's a little tricky to do. Um, Google is getting better at this. They allow you now to log in and to administer multiple accounts and do a few things. Um, if in doubt, sign out is what I always say. When, you, when you're dealing with Google, setting it up personally, setting up for business, sign out of any accounts you currently have and be really mindful about signing back into Google that you're in the right email address for the right name for the right entity, whether that be your personal or your business one that you're doing. Okay, any questions on those, let me know as we're going ahead to and I'll leave some time at the end for questions. <coughs> okay, so with Facebook being the major network that most of you will be using for business, it's also the one I anticipate most of you using and spending the most time on personally. A couple of things to get right from the beginning or to rectify if you haven't done this. When you sign into Facebook, you sign in with an email address and a password. That is signing into your personal profile. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, by law, sorry, by Facebook regulations, you are only allowed to have one Facebook profile per person. So there should never be a time when you are logging in with a different email address and password in Facebook. And if you are, if you have more than one account, say you set one up for yourself and one up for when you do business or agency work or whatever it is. Facebook are tracking and logging every time you log in from that device, your computer, your mobile, whatever it is, from your IP address. They're tracking all of the data on those multiple accounts and if they think that the same person has two accounts, they will delete them both with no recourse. And the reason for that, they're really clamping down on identity fraud. So be mindful of that. You may notice when you sign up, you don't have to give them a lot of data. First name, surname, your email, re-enter it, pick a password, tell them your gender and your date of birth. Any and all of that data could be false. You're telling Facebook it's real. But something like your um, birthday, you do need to remember it because it becomes a security question, okay? But you can decide whether you go in with sort of initials. Now, what you can't do is use a, a fake name that looks fake. You can't call yourself Mickey Mouse or Pizza Hut because they simply won't allow you to sign up anymore. They've also become really strict around signing up with administrative emails. And what I mean by that is emails that start with info or action or support at, admin at, those sort of email addresses don't tend to work anymore either. Now you notice right down the bottom here, I have this here, there is a little bit to create a page for a celebrity band or business. I'm saying do not use that. Sign up for a personal profile and next week we'll create a company page because this one here is really more um, where you're just trying to use advertising on the site. It has very, very few features and they are being wiped out. Now I think this slide, although it looks like cartoons, is one of the most valuable in the whole slide deck. If you can get this right for Facebook, you'll get it right across all of social media. Your personal profile is your personal membership. You sign in with your email address and a password. 
And think of it, I use the Yippee Girl here. It's your personal profile. You connect with friends. You like pages that you like. You join groups around sports and active things. You could join groups that have a business intent, but just like business networking groups, you're there as an individual, even if you're talking about your business. Now, if you start advertising your business on your profile, not making reference to it, not saying I've got this coming up, but just continually talking business, what you'll find is Facebook will stop showing your posts and may even delete or suspend your account. It's quite fine though for a personal profile to set up and or create and administer a business page. So profiles are personal, pages are business. And think of this like a flyer for your business and people simply choose to like the page. If they like the page, then they get updates from that business potentially. Okay. Groups are groups of people that come together around a common topical theme. We have a great group for this program, but you are all profiles, so you're all individuals within the group. The training collective can't start a group or join a group. It has to be one of the individuals here that does that. Events are around a, a date delineated. Now, here's the great thing about events. They can be set up by an individual profile or a company page. So think personal events, weddings, parties, anything, are on your personal profile and business events, trainings, launches, etc., are set up by the business page. So I ask you to think about tonight, in that what I call the yippee having fun girl space, who are you? I want you to think about how visual do you want to be? Who do you want seeing you? Who are you connecting to as a friend? And most importantly, what are you going to share? Because if you say, I want my private life, I want to actually be able to use Facebook personally for my family, for my friends, and put my kids on there, then it's really important when I come down here, if you can see here, under the About section, that you don't put too much business stuff. Now you'll notice this is my personal profile on Facebook. And you'll notice that I list a lot in the About section because I do front my business. I work for lots of businesses. Um, I had the opposite problem where a lot of people were finding me and asking to friend me on my personal profile. So I put lots of information that says, click on the link and go to my business page because that's where you'll find all the information about social media. Because I have a lot of friends, when I first started on Facebook, I come from an age where it was if a boy asked you to dance, it was rude to say no. So I just accepted everybody. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and I ended up with a lot of, you know, Nigerian princes who thought I was beautiful, great for the ego, terrible for privacy and security. So, you know, I'm going back through and culling all of these friends and putting them into lists and getting structure around it. Long story short, if I'm going to put this much out there and connect with lots of people, I have to seriously limit what I'm posting. What I could have done is connected with a whole lot less and just let our business page be the place where I share everything about social media, social media trainings, how to maximise social media for your business. Now you'll notice that even on This is a Creative Collective's one page that we had up at one stage, or the cover photo we're using at one stage, you'll notice the team, there's Peter here and the vet, um, and Tracy you may all know, and Matt and Penny, but we still have a personal face to the company in this in this particular photo, but it's not our personal profile, it's us at work, hard at work by the look of that photo. When it comes to the training collective, we kept it very much to a business, branded, corporate, lots of strategies. Completely up to you how you make that look. Now I've mentioned groups a few times and I just want to solidify this before we start finishing up is we have a Get Up To Speed Members Lounge. Now it's a group on Facebook and after tonight I would encourage you, I'm not going to say you must have a Facebook profile. What I am going to say to you is if you set up your Facebook profile, go through this week's learnings. Think about what am I going to put in the About section. You can say as little as you like. Now Facebook's going to continually ask you for information but how much you put in is up to you. Go up to the little down arrow right up here in the top right hand corner of your account. Scroll down, click on it and scroll down to privacy and settings, manage 
and go through one by one every one of those privacy and settings and make sure you're comfortable. Who can connect with you? Who can tag you in photos? Who can see what you post? Who can see photos you're tagged in? Be, it will take you a good hour to go through all those privacy and settings. And in fact, I do that about once a month. I review them and make sure I'm happy with them all as well. And then I really encourage you to come in and join us in the Get Up to Speed Members Lounge. It's an active group. We're posting information updates. We ask for your feedback. If I um, mention resources that I'm going to give you or questions I haven't been able to answer this evening, I will be doing that in the group. I'm much more active for the two weeks around my training program, but I'm actually always coming in and out of the group, as are our other trainers, as are the creative collective and training collectives teams as well. Um, so use the group. It's a valuable resource, and we've actually had some wonderful business synergies um, allegiances and alliances coming out of the group. We've had some regions where people on the course have got together um, and started listening to the webinars as a group or working through the trainings together because they relate more to the face-to-face. -face. It's also a great way to connect with the mentors um, if you haven't done that already as well. Okay, so I've done a few things and let's start wrapping it up and we're going to look at one thing on privacy. I'm just going to flick over to some questions. Uh, great question, Cam uh, Karen. With Facebook privacy settings on your personal profile, do they flow through to a business page or do you need to set up separate settings on your business pages? Great question. So I showed you a little down arrow, privacy settings manage. That's for your personal profile. When you come over to your business page, you could have multiple people that are administrating or running that business page. We'll talk about that next week. So all of their personal profiles could have different levels of security and privacy settings. Okay? A page by default is 100% public. And for most businesses, they actually want their pages to be completely open. Okay? The reason for that is you want Google to be able to see it. You want the page to be found in search engines. For certain industries, um, uh, due to legal requirements or some sensitivities where you know you've got people that, that might say some nasty things, um, you do want to limit things. So that's actually when you're on the page as an admin, you need to go up to settings. Okay? And there you can look at if you're blocking people, if the page is limited to you know, over 18s only, certain countries. You can block, um, profan you put a profanity on, so a profanity filter, so if people are swearing. You can also block comments with certain words. Uh, I had a great example of a... Um, assisted fertility clinic, their doctor's names couldn't be mentioned. So they simply put uh, a block on those the doctor's names and if those names came up, the, the comment would go for review rather than just post on the page. Yep. So long answer short, your personal profile settings are your privacy settings. Once you set up the page, you need to go and look at the settings on the page, otherwise they default to 100% private. Um, the other question I normally ask here is if I set up a page, do people know I'm the administrator of it? No, not unless you choose to feature yourself. Um, I'm an admin on nearly 100, on 96 pages I think at the moment. Um, I feature myself, so I actually in the settings on the page say featured admins. I let you know I'm an admin on three of them. Okay. Okay, let me see what's going on there. Okay. In other words, thing, um, to effectively measure these, what I would say to you is choose a platform and really get comfortable with it. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, just do one platform at a time. There are tools to make you more effective, more efficient and get better, but really you think about it just as a communication tool. What happens when you get an email? How long do you take to respond? How do you handle that? How do you monitor results? How do you know if you're just wasting time and you're getting results? And if you treat it really as another way to reach out and help people, whether that be personally or next week for your business, social media gives you the power to reach people like no other communication tool I know. You think about how empowering it was when we could take a phone with us, a mobile phone, and we could ring people out. We weren't missing their calls. Now we're at the stage we're looking at the screen going, oh, I don't want to talk to mum right now, um, and turning the phone over. So social media can be like that. Some days it's all too overwhelming. That's okay. Put some boundaries around it. Now with that in mind, I'm going to finish um, on an area that normally scares people a little bit, but I don't want it to, and that's in safety and security when using social media. 
I'm sure you've all heard um, some horror stories. And I think the biggest thing is don't lose your brain when you go online. I know that's not very technical. But think about would I do this in real life? So I had my 77-year-old mother-in-law asked me, she said, this lady asked to be my friend. I went, that's nice. She said, but I don't know her. And I said, then ignore it, like decline it. But that's rude. And I said, well, why is it rude if you don't know her? And she said, well, she asked to be my friend. And we had this pointless conversation around if I don't know her, but I'm worried about what she will think of me. Now, I don't know if it was spam, if it was somebody trying to, you know, get her bank details as she thought it was or anything else. But the reality was if someone walked up and, up to you in the street and went, be my friend, the first thing you'd ask him is, do I know you? You know, so nothing can stop you sending a message back to do that. There is no, don't be pressured by the technology. I'll also say don't, don't be bullied by the social media sites themselves. Just because LinkedIn and Facebook keep asking you for more information. Where did you go to school? Where else have you worked? Who do you know these friends? Do you know these people? Here's some more people to connect with. If you don't want to tell them that, don't tell them. I don't tell you that I work in a pie shop to work my way through university or did musical theatre because I don't think it's relevant and I don't want my ideal target market to know that. Okay? Like I said, the government one I was thinking, I don't want the market to know, but really, when I looked at it objectively, yes, I did want the market to know. That's different. If you're going to put personal information on it, be prepared for it to be shared. I will tell you that every single keystroke that you post on Facebook, even if you delete it subsequently, it's actually cached what's kept for seven years. That's why when you post something and you delete it, it says edited or deleted. And it's hidden from view, but it's still in the service. So think about, would I say this to a person? Would I say this in real life? How would I feel if this was brought out on a piece of paper in a court of law? And you may think differently about whether to post it or not. In terms of um, strong passwords, changing them regularly, I think that's really vital. There are some tools. There's actually an app called LastPass. I don't know if you've done that already. Um, and so L-A-S-T-P-A-S-S, -S. anyone else got other apps and things for passwords, online security, please come and share them in the group. That would be awesome. Uh, and keep it up to date. I will get on my little soapbox here, Internet Explorer and even the current version of it, do not use it, pure and simple. If you're worried about your security, do not use Internet Explorer. Now, I know some of you in government or larger organisations are limited that it is the only browser you're allowed to use. But for your personal use, I would not be using it. It has too many holes in it and too many security risks. And for most of the social media sites, it's actually too slow to be effective. Um, for me personally, I like Chrome and Firefox. And for your Apple users, I'm sure most of you are on Safari. Great question. Um, this come through a bit off topics, but I put a request to be in contact with a mentor. Um, can you bring that one back into the either into the group or contact? Um, yeah, come back into the group if you've got one, though, and I'll drop a line to Elise. She's our training manager, even if you tag Elise Riley in the group. If not, ask it of me. I'm just um, just seeing who asked the question. Chelsea, yep, I'll, um, I'll let them know too, but if you can come and just pop that in the group, that would be awesome. And if you had a specific request for a mentor or something, you know, let them know that as well. Any other questions? Anything else we haven't covered? Is there anyone that's not in the group yet or had any trouble accessing the Facebook group? Okay, we've got one of you that says, because you hadn't had a, okay, that's that's a good question. Okay, don't have a Facebook profile and I don't really want one. I, look, I do understand your hesitation and and I don't think it's my right or anybody else's to tell you you must have a Facebook profile. Um, I think in business terms, depending on your business, and I don't know your business, but I think in business terms, um, you're sort of operating with your one hand tied behind your back in social media marketing if you don't have a Facebook profile because without a profile, 
you can't administer a business page. Now, even if you're paying a marketing agency or somebody else to do all of your marketing, without the profile and admin rights to your page, you can't get in and see your analytics and your statistics called Facebook Insights. So I think just for keeping them honest and, and maintaining a level of control, then that Facebook profile is really important. What I would say to you, though, is be very careful. If you're setting one up, be very careful in the setup. If you're saying, I really don't want a profile, I don't want to use Facebook and in inverted commas personally, I just want it for business, what I would say to you is just put the absolute bare information in, you know, maybe use a nickname or initials um, in your name. Uh, I had uh, some of my friends actually use their birthday and month but their husband's year and vice versa so their, their, birth, their birthday is reasonable but not really right. But if you're going to do that, then don't go and add friends. No, don't, don't go and start accepting people as friends. If you find over time that you probably find you'll get more comfortable with it. You may want to start connecting with friends, become a member of the, group, the course group, etc. What I would say to you is just always be checking those privacy and security settings and know exactly. Facebook actually gives you a lot of control. Most of us don't use it because Facebook doesn't actively teach us how to use it. Because in reality, they don't want you to use it. They want you to give them lots of data, post everything that's happening in your life, all your interactions, your likes, your loves, your shares, your hates, because that's valuable data that next week as marketers we're going to tap into. So when you can see the power of social media marketing from a business viewpoint, you actually will think very differently around your personal use. And I know for me, once I understood it from a business perspective, I change the way I used it personally. Now, if you don't want to have to change the way you're doing it personally, that's fine. Just be really confident that you know what your privacy and security settings are. You know who's seeing posts, how they can interact with those posts and where those posts may end up and that you're comfortable in doing so. Looks like we've gone through all of the questions. I look forward to seeing you in the group. Uh, that mentor request, please come and pop that in the group again and I'll, um, I'll highlight that to Elise, our training manager. Um, I know you can't wait to get in the social media for business marketing. That's next week. I imagine we'll have lots and lots of questions. Until then, have an awesome week and I'll see you in the Facebook group. Good night, everybody.